Well, we're finishing the book of Exodus today as we read at chapters 39 and 40. So let's dive in. From the blue, purple and scarlet yarn, they made woven garments for ministering in the sanctuary. They also made sacred garments for Aaron, as the Lord commanded Moses. They made the ephod of gold and of blue, purple and scarlet yarn, and of finely twisted linen. They hammered out thin sheets of gold and cut strands to be worked into the blue, purple and scarlet yarn and fine linen the work of skilled hands. They made shoulder pieces for the ephod, which were attached to two of its corners so that it could be fastened. Its skillfully woven waistband was like it of one piece with the ephod and made with gold and with blue, purple and scarlet yarn, and with finely twisted linen, as the Lord commanded Moses. They mounted the onyx stones in gold filigree settings and engraved them like a seal with the names of the sons of Israel. Then they fastened them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod as memorial stones, for the sons of Israel, as the Lord commanded Moses. They fashioned the breast piece, the work of a skilled craftsman. They made it like the ephod of gold and of blue, purple and scarlet yarn and of finely twisted linen. It was square, a span long and a span wide and folded double. Then they mounted four rows of precious stones on it. The first row was carnelian, chrysolite and beryl. The second row was turquoise, lapis lazuli and emerald. The third row was jacinth agate and amethyst. The fourth row was topaz, onyx and jasper. They were mounted in gold filigree settings. Uh, there were 12 stones, one for each of the names of the sons of Israel, each engraved like a seal with the name of one of the 12 tribes. For the best breast piece, they made braided chains of pure gold like a rope. They made two gold filigree settings and two gold rings and fascinated the rings to two of the corners of the breast piece. They fastened the two gold chains to the rings at the corners of the breast piece and the other ends of the chains to the two settings, attaching them to the shoulder pieces of the ephod at the front. They made two gold rings and attached them to the other two corners of the breast piece on the inside edge next to the ephod. Then they made two more gold rings and attached them to the bottom of the shoulder pieces on the front of the ephod, close to the seam just above the waistband of the ephod. They tied the rings of the breast piece to the rings of the ephod with blue cord, connecting it to the waistband so that the breast piece would not swing out from the ephod as the Lord commanded Moses. They made the robe of the ephod entirely of blue cloth, the work of a weaver, with an ongoing, with an opening in the center of the robe, like the opening of a collar, and a band around this opening so that it would not tear. They made pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and finely twisted linen around the hem of the robe. And they made bells of pure gold and attached them around the hem between the pomegranates. The bells and pomegranates alternated around the hem of the robe to be worn for ministry, as the Lord commanded Moses. For Aaron and his sons, they made tunics of fine linen, the work of a weaver and the turban of free linen, the linen caps and the undergarments of finely twisted linen. The sash was made of finely twisted linen and blue, purple and scarlet yarn, the work of an embroiderer, as the Lord commanded Moses. They made the plate, the sacred emblem out of pure gold and engraved on it like an inscription on a seal, holy to the Lord. Then they fastened the blue cord to it, attached it to the cert turban as the turban, as the Lord commanded Moses. So all the walk, work on the tabernacle, the tent of meeting was completed. The Israelites did everything just as the Lord commanded Moses. Then they brought the tabernacle to Moses, the tent and all its furnishings, its clasps, frames, crossbars, posts and bases, the covering of ram skins dyed red and the covering of another durable leather and the shielding curtain, the Ark of the Covenant law with its poles and the entonement covenant, the table with its art articles and the bread of the presence the pure gold lampstand with its rows of lamps and all its accessories and the olive oil for the light, the gold altar, the anointing oil, the fragrant incense and the curtain for the entrance to the tent, the bronze altar with its bronze grating, its poles and all its utensils, the basin with its stand, the curtains of the courtyard with its posts and bases and the curtain for the entrance to the courtyard, the ropes and tent pegs for the courtyard, all the furnishings for the tabernacle, the tent of meeting and the woven garments worn for ministering in the sanctuary both the sacred garments for Aaron the priest and the garments for his sons when serving as priests. The Israelites had done all the work just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Moses inspected the work and saw that they had done it just as the Lord had commanded. So Moses blessed them. Then the Lord said to Moses, set up the tabernacle, the tent of meeting on the first day of the month. Place the Ark of the Covenant law in it and shield the Ark with a curtain. Bring in the table and set out what belongs on it. Then bring in the lampstand and set up its lamps. Place the gold altar of incense in front of the Ark of the Covenant Law and put the curtain at the entrance to the tabernacle. 
Place the altar of burnt offering in front of the entrance to the tabernacle, the tent of meeting. Place the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it. Set up the courtyard around it and put the curtain at the entrance to the courtyard. Take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and everything in it. Consecrate it and all its furnishings and it will be holy. Then anoint the altar of burnt offering and all its utensils. Consecrate the altar and it will be most holy. Anoint the basin and its stand and consecrate them. Bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance to the tent of meeting and wash them with water. Then dress Aaron in the sacred garments, anoint him and consecrate him so that he may serve me as priest. Bring his sons and dress them in tunics. Anoint them just as you anointed their father so that they may serve me as priests. Their anointing will be to a priesthood that will continue throughout their generations. Moses did everything just as the Lord commanded him. So the tabernacle was set up on the first day of the first month in the second year. When Moses set up the tabernacle, he put the bases in place, erected the frames, inserted the crossbars, and set up the posts. Then he spread the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering over the tent as the Lord commanded him. He took the tablets of the covenant law and placed them in the ark, attached the poles to the ark and put the covenant, the atonement cover over it. Then he brought the ark into the tabernacle and hung the shielding curtain and shielded the ark of the covenant law as the Lord commanded him. Moses placed the table in the tent of meeting on the north side of the tabernacle outside the curtain and set out the bread on it before the Lord as the Lord commanded him. He placed the lampstand in the tent of meeting opposite the table on the south side of the tabernacle and set up the lamps before the Lord as the Lord commanded him. Moses placed the gold altar in the tent of meeting in front of the curtain and burned fragrant incense on it as the Lord commanded him. Then he put up the curtain at the entrance to the tabernacle. He set the altar of burnt offering near the entrance to the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, and offered on it burnt offerings and grain offerings, as the Lord commanded him. He placed the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it for washing. And Moses and Aaron and his sons used it to wash their hands and feet. They washed whenever they entered the tent of meeting or approached the altar as the Lord commanded Moses. Then Moses set up the courtyard around the tabernacle and altar and put up the curtain at the entrance of the courtyard. And so Moses finished the work. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses could not enter the tent because the cloud had settled on it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. In all the travels of the Israelites, whenever the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle, they would set out. And if the cloud did not lift, they did not set out until the day it lifted. So the cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day, and fire was in the cloud by night, in the sight of all the Israelites during all their travels. That's a long two chapters, and it seems to be just going over all the stuff that we've been reading about, all the, the clothing for the high priest, all the furniture of the tabernacle. But this is the, the final stage. They're actually um, putting it all together and uh, um, erecting it all. I think what's perhaps most striking and the most important lesson all the way through this is, is how often it, re it repeats the phrase, they did exactly as the Lord had told, commanded Moses, um, as the Lord commanded Moses. It's repeated at least 16 times in these two chapters. Um, and it's as they finish then, uh, exactly as God has commanded, uh, that God's presence uh, fills the tabernacle in such a wonderful way that uh, Moses can't get in. Uh, the glory of the Lord is so present that uh, um, uh, he's not able to enter. And uh, this presence of the Lord then is, is going to go before and uh, remain with the people throughout all their uh, journeyings. But that presence was only possible uh, because they followed the Lord's commands as to how to put together uh, the priesthood uh, and the tabernacle. The, the, the way for God to be present among his people, the, the, the approach uh, uh, to God of a sinful people uh, has to be so clearly regulated uh, and those commands have to be so clearly uh, followed without following God's commands uh, exactly as God had commanded Moses this would not have happened um, this uh, conclusion would have not been reached um, and uh, so we, we have to learn then um, that the significance of all these different elements as we've been reading through and uh, if you get time it's worth going back and and perhaps picking up some of these things and following them through the storyline of the Bible because they all point us to the Lord Jesus and ultimately it's the writer to Hebrew saying says this is all just a shadow of the greater reality um, uh, uh, pointing to uh, the only way that God can really dwell with his people and his people uh, be uh, in his presence. And that's through the sacrificial work of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world, who is the bread of life, who, who is the, the, the high priest uh, that we need, who is the perfect sacrifice, who did fully obey uh, all the law. And all of this is pointing us 
uh, to him. It is just a challenge, isn't it, to those who think they can um, sort out their relationship with God, ignoring God's word, to, to those who, who want to write their own terms and conditions for coming to God, or, or to go with the popular view rather than actually responding to God's word and God's self-revelation. Um, without doing uh, what God commands, there is no way to come uh, into his presence before him. The wonderful thing is that what God commands us today is not the construction of a tent with all these detailed instructions, uh, but to repent and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, to turn from our sin and to trust in him. And we can know God as our father and the spirit coming to dwell within us. And we can know Christ to whom, whom to know is life eternal. Let's pray. Father, it seems a bit of a slog to have read through these chapters and lots of details around clothing and furniture and uh, repeating of those details constantly. Um, and yet it's very clear from your word, the, the point to be made in these last two chapters, that everything was done as you commanded Moses. And uh, Father, we thank you that uh, um, these stipulations, these commands so clearly point us to what is needed uh, for us to be able to know you, to be able to come close, for you to dwell in the midst of a sinful people. And we thank you that it points all points to the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the obedience of the people at this moment in time in constructing it as was commanded. We thank you for the uh, the dramatic end to the book as you presence yourself amongst your people. Um, and as we think about where we've come from at the beginning of the book, are people in slavery, are people crying out for mercy. And here you are having rescued them and now present among them. And we thank you that that points us to the greater exodus, uh, the leaving, um, the, the slavery of uh, Satan's kingdom, and being taken out on our journey now to the promised land with you present amongst us by your spirit um, and one day coming into the land where there will be no tabernacle needed because uh, the lamb is present and we are in uh, in in your presence we we thank you for that new heavens and that new earth uh, that we so look forward to and father we pray that you'd help us then to learn that we approach only on your terms only in the way that you have provided and we thank you that all of this points us to the lord jesus christ help us lord to treasure these details, to mull over them, to reflect on how they get us to Christ and help us to love Jesus more. And we ask this in his name. Amen.